A new global study has found that humans, now we, are literally consuming plastics with an average person ingesting about 5 grams of microplastics every week. Now, think about it. That's about the weight of a credit card. And that report by the University of Newcastle is the first to combine insights on the topic from over 50 studies around the world. Melissa Goh has more. 8 million tons of plastic ends up in the oceans each year. And according to a new study commissioned by WWF, some of it is making its way into our bodies as microplastics, which are particles smaller than 5 millimeters. Microplastics can come from cosmetics, cleaning agents or clothing fibers, or from the breakdown of larger plastic debris. These could have leaked into nature through waste or wastewater that was dumped or improperly managed. The study found that the single largest source of plastic ingestion globally is bottled and tap water. Responding to queries from CNA, Singapore's National Water Agency, PUB, says there are no microplastics in the nation's tap water as they are removed when water is treated. People who live in highly industrialized areas with uh, nominal waste management facilities will be exposed to a higher risk of ingesting microplastics. Whereas someone who is living in a pristine environment with good management, um, waste management facilities would have a lower um, risk of being exposed to microplastics. Then food we eat also plays a big part. Microplastics are also found in sources as diverse as beer, salt and shellfish. But the study excludes staple foods like bread, rice and pasta, as there isn't sufficient data. The Singapore Food Agency told CNA it routinely tests food samples to ensure food safety and will implement measures when necessary. While it's still unclear what microplastics can do to our bodies, WWF says its report should serve as a wake-up call for governments. It's very important for one that the global governments come together uh, as part of a global treaty, for example. There should be a clear target that no plastics should end up in nature. Plastics end up in all of us. It is a global problem and a global problem has to be tackled at a global stage first. If there's sort of like a cradle-to-grave approach where the, the creation of plastics right up to the death or the reuse or the recycle of it is, is accounted for, then you will reduce the amount of microplastics that enter the environment. Consumers can start by generating less plastic waste. And to get businesses to step up, Singapore will soon roll out a mandatory packaging reporting framework that will require larger firms to submit reports on how they plan to reduce packaging waste. And for more, we're joined by the study co-lead Kala Sanathi Raja from University of Newcastle, Australia, and Kim Stenger, Chief of WWF Singapore's Strategic Communication and External Relations. Thanks very much for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, Kala, let's come to you first of all. Um, just explain to us the concept of microplastics and, and, and how they are identified or, de or detected, really. Okay. Microplastics are basically plastic particles that are smaller than 5 millimetres in size. And um, to detect them, you, 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 the, the bigger particles, the five millimeters, you can use your naked eye. Mm -hmm. But the smaller um, nano-sized particles and even micro-sized particles, you would need um, spectroscopy or a um, stereo microscope. Yeah, that's quite scary, isn't it? Because it even is. as we're talking, uh, it could the be all around us on the, on the table. So how, the do they, how do they get into the foods that we eat and eventually you know, yeah. end up into in, in, in us? How does that happen? Um, you're right, there are actually um, microplastics in the air that, that, um, that surrounds us and also um, it uh, travels in the water and um, it's also ingested by organisms that we eat such as shellfish. So the, um, micro -pl the plastics that break down in the oceans and in the beach and stuff enters into our food web through um, organisms that we then ingest. Uh, it also enters into like the water supply. Um, it potentially can be removed in the water treatment plants, but then if you have like plastic piping that conveys the water mm. to your home, you could potentially be ingesting that. When you open your tap, the air um, could contribute more. Um, so there are m many sources mm. um, from the air, the water, even the clothes we wear has releases like microplastic fibers. So mm. um, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Kim, talk yeah. to us about I mean, we know how much we are ingesting, size of a credit card equivalent, essentially, uh, a week. Um, but what do we know about the effects of, of these microplastics um, having on our bodies? 
I think we, we still have to wait for the science to be really clear on what it does to our bodies. There's a couple of studies with indications, but not as, not as really conclusive enough to just make a call just now. Yeah. What I really hope, and I think what the study really tells me, is, is we have to be concerned that we can't escape this problem anymore. And so we have to start fixing it, no matter if we already know how bad it is for our health or, mm. or if it does anything at all. And um, we're basically, we've been putting 8 million tons of plastic into nature every single year, right? It's just been dumped into our oceans. And now it's just coming back to us in tiny, tiny pieces. And so we really have to come together, and, and we really hope the global governments will come together to start fixing this really transboundary, I would say, universal problem. Um, it's, it's, it's much less about uh, where is the problem in the world, because it's, it's literally everywhere. So it's almost a case of you are what you eat and you are a product of what your country then, you know, handles and how your country handles plastic is also how it's going to affect you. The question then happens is big fish eats small fish. The particles that are in our body, do we know what it's doing and how does it, does it, does it even leave our body? Do we know that, Carla? Um, we don't actu actually have enough evidence to show um, the impacts of microplastics on humans at the moment, but the effects on um, organisms, that, marine organisms in particular, that have been studied do show adverse impacts, um, including you know, inflammation of muscles and um, endocrine disruptions, and uh, it affects their reproductive organs. Mm. Um, so if we can extrapolate that, you know, it, it hasn't been done yet on humans, um, but... Um, it's down the track. Mm. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, that action has to be taken now. The question is, are we too far gone? I mean, there was a call in the story we saw earlier of people to cut down on plastic consumption. In Singapore, we're seeing already some results mm -hmm. of that happening. Organizations, F&B, coming together to sort of cut down on, on plastic waste and, and, and so on and so forth. What else does, can be done? I mean, plastic is such a, a big part of our lives. I think what we really need to see is... is, is for one, that we have businesses really rallying together. Um, just when, when we did the announcement around straws last week in, in Singapore and 270 outlets mm. coming together to remove that, that's a fantastic first step, but it's a first step. Um, generally, we just have to disrupt this whole system from a, a linear system that it is right now where we produce plastics just to throw them away and really have, that, uh, have to turn that around that this material can stay in the loop and stay as a material um, um, for as long as possible. So we really, really need great waste management, collection, uh, a really functioning recycling system as well. But also on the same side, we really need businesses to reduce the amount of plastics to what's really necessary uh, and also design them in the way that they can be used for recycling and that they actually can retain the value of the material itself. We're talking about single-use plastics, but what about you know plastics that are unavoidable in our everyday? Because you know there are plastics that you know we have no choice but to use. What happens then with instances of, of that situation? I think generally, you know, it, it really depends on what kind of material is used, yeah? what kind of plastic is it, and then also um, is the product uh, designed to be reused or recycled mm -hmm. or not? And that's what we really have to move towards. Right now, a lot of the materials are really used for what well, a single use and then disposed. Well, yeah, well, you know, that, that's a lot to take in, you know, that we're actually consuming plastics. We don't even know mm. how, what the effects are on our body. And so, you know, the first step is to actually just, you know, do your bit. You know, every little bit counts, right? So, and it all adds up. Yeah, it all adds up. You know, I guess for us here in the office, you know, what I'm doing right now, John, is that, you know, I bring my little cutlery and my, my straw mm. and, you know, I don't use a single use of, um, I don't use the plastic that, you know, is given. The yeah, it's not just you. I, I mean, I've seen this happen a lot mm. uh, in the office mm. uh, during, around dinner time. Everybody just uses their own containers, cutting down on, on yeah. disposables. Uh, but thank you so much for, for coming in this evening and sharing your studies with us. Uh, we've been speaking there with uh, Kala Sanathi uh, Raja, uh, the researcher who co-led the study, as well as uh, Kim Stengich. He is the chief of WWF Singapore Strategic Communication and External Relations.